Hello you guys, what is up? If you are new to my channel, hi, my name is Ruby. I live here in New York City. This is my lifestyle channel. Be sure to go ahead and click that subscribe button if you haven't already. We're trying to reach 7K. That is the next goal here for this channel. If you are not new here, welcome back. Thank you so much for taking the time to watch yet another video. Today I'm going to be recapping and reviewing all of the books that I read in February of 2022. It's funny, for being the shortest month out of the year, I read a lot of books this month. I think I read five in total which considering my insanely busy schedule and kind of like the millions of different directions that I'm always pulled, that's a very like decent amount of books to read, at least I think. I am so excited though to go through all of these reads with you because I feel like I read quite a bit of like different fiction. I read some newer releases. I read some books that have been out for a while. I just haven't gotten around to reading them yet. And I'm also just very excited for this series in general. I know that my what I read in January went over super well with you guys and so many of you enjoyed that and you wanted more book and more reading content. So we are back. Now, as per usual, I don't actually have the physical books with me because I read everything on my Kindle Oasis. So when I talk about each book, I'm going to pop a picture of the cover up here on the screen. I'll read the synopsis that's listed online, and then I'm going to go ahead and talk about my thoughts about the book, kind of rate it out of five stars. But yeah, let's just get into it. Now, my phone is actually charging, so I'm going to read everything off of my iPad. So if you see a giant screen in the corner, that's what it is. Okay, so the first book that I read in February was called Final Girls. So this was written by Riley Sager. I think that's how you pronounce her name. Also, you guys, I'm so sorry. The construction is still going on in the apartment above me, so if you hear some hammering, that is it. Anyways, though, Final Girls is categorized as a thriller novel, and it was definitely quite, like, scary. I felt my heart racing in a lot of parts. This is actually a pretty long synopsis, so I'm gonna kind of try and, like, condense this and just read only a little bit of it. So it says, 10 years ago, college student Quincy Carpenter went on vacation with five friends and came back alone, the only survivor of a horror movie-scale massacre. In an instant she became a member of a club no one wants to belong to, a group of similar survivors in the press known as the Final Girls. Lisa, who lost nine sorority sisters to a college dropout's knife. Sam, who went up against the sack man during her shift at the Nightlight Inn. And now Quincy, who ran bleeding through the woods to escape Pine Cottage and the man she refers to only as him. Now Quincy is doing well. She has a fiance. Her memory won't even allow her to recall the events of that night. The past is in the past. That is until Lisa, the first final girl, is found dead in her bathtub, and Sam, the second final girl, appears on Quincy's doorstep. So basically after that, all of these crazy things start to unfold. Um, Quincy, the main character, starts to kind of re-remember things about this horrific incident. This book was so good. I'm gonna give it a five out of five right out of the gate. Um, even though it was my first read for the month of February, it is still the book that burns like the most vivid in my mind. I can still remember every little thing that happened in the book. And it was one of those that even if my mind tried to jump to where I thought it was going, I was always wrong. And while I said that yes, this book was definitely scary, it wasn't like the scariest book I've ever read. My heart was definitely beating, but it wasn't like I couldn't go to bed that night. I don't enjoy books that are that terrifying quite frankly. I like books though that are thrillers that are really gonna make me think kind of like this. It wasn't scary for the sake of being scary. It was scary because that's the way the plot went. I don't know if that makes sense but that's kind of like the best way that I can describe it. Like it wasn't scary for shock factor. It was scary just because of the way that the events of the book were unfolding. I really enjoyed Riley's writing style. I feel like this book went by super fast even though it was definitely like a longer read. It's interesting because reading some of the reviews, I really like to read book reviews after I finish the book just because I don't want to like run into any spoilers, but it's interesting because a lot of people, or not like a lot, but quite a few were saying that they thought that this book was very generic and easy to guess what was happening. I could not disagree more. I thought all the characters were super interesting for their own reasons. I thought they were all very different. There weren't any characters where I felt like they weren't really necessary to the plot. I feel like if you like Gone Girl, kind of that style of book, you'd really enjoy this. I can't wait to read more from the author. Such a strong start to my reads in February. Now the second book I read in February is something totally Totally different from a thriller and that is the book Everything After by Jill Santopolo. I really hope I'm not mispronouncing her name. I have heard so much about this author. I feel like so many of the people who I go to for book recommendations are always talking about Jill Santopolo's books and so it really made me eager to read a couple actually this month. Now from what I've gathered this isn't like her most popular book but it is one that people really really love so I was excited to read it. Let's dive into 
to the synopsis. This one is a little bit shorter. Two loves, two choices, one chance to follow her dreams. Emily has come a long way since she lost her two passions 15 years ago, music and Rob. She's a psychologist at NYU who helps troubled college students like the one she once was. They're happy, they hope to start a family, but when a tragic event in Emily's present too closely echoes her past and parts of her story that she'd never, she hoped never to share come to light, her perfect life is suddenly upturned. That was a long sentence, sorry. Then Emily hears a song on the radio about the woman who got away. The melody and the voice are hauntingly familiar. Could it be? As Emily's past passions come roaring back into her life, she'll find herself asking, who is she meant to be? Who is she meant to love? So obviously this is a fictional romance, a genre that I definitely enjoy, especially when they're based in New York City. I talked about this in my last month's kind of like monthly reads breakdown video. I really enjoy books that are based in New York City, even if they're fictional books. I don't know, I feel like it helps me connect more to the story, the characters. It's just something that I really enjoy. Obviously, I don't just read books based in NYC, but it's a nice bonus when it happens. Now, I will say, I think out of all my reads this month, this was actually my least favorite. I'm gonna give this a 3.5 out of 5 stars. So, still not a terrible rating, but not great. Do I regret reading the book? Absolutely not. Is this an author who I still really enjoy? Yes. Like I said, I read another one of her books later in the month, and it was like a 10 out of 10 for me. And this book, the problem that I had with it wasn't the author's writing style, it was the main character. Definitely comment down below or DM me if you've read this book, but there was something about the main character of Emily that I just really didn't like. It wasn't that I didn't find her real or relatable because there were definitely parts of the character that I did, but overall, I just finished the book like really not rooting for her, which I don't think was the point of this book. I think the author probably intended for you to at least like be okay with her in the end. And I don't know, I was just a little disappointed in my girl Emily. I finished the book and I was like, okay. <laughs> you know, obviously as the synopsis touched on, this is one of those books where it's like, you know, you're pulled between your past and your present and you're in between these two great loves. And the story itself was still interesting. It wasn't like I disliked the character so much that I wanted to stop reading the book, but I just felt that the way that like she handled everything throughout the story, I was just kind of like constantly disagreeing with and not even like heavily disagreeing. I just like wasn't rooting for her. However, I really enjoyed like the vivid language. I feel like the author painted everything really well and like super clearly. I would still recommend reading it because I feel like I'm in the minority. Again, from reading reviews of this book, people who have read it seem to really enjoy it. But for me, it just wasn't my top read. It wasn't my favorite for the month. The next book that I read is a book that I feel like literally everybody has been talking about. It's a brand new release and so I really wanted to be a part of the conversation. I believe it's a brand new release. Now I'm like questioning everything I just said, but no, no, I think it like just came out recently. If it's not a new release, it's still a book that everybody and their mother's been talking about, but that is the Midnight Library by Matt Haig. Somewhere out there beyond the edge of the universe, there is a library that contains an infinite number of books, each one the story of another reality. One tells the story of your life as it is, along with another book for the other life that you could have lived if you had made a different choice at any point in your life. While we all wonder how many lives might have been, what if you had the chance to go to the library and see for yourself? Would any of these other lives truly be better? In the Midnight Library, Matt Haig's enchanting blockbuster novel, Nora Seed, finds herself faced with this decision. Faced with the possibility of changing her life for a new one, following a different career. She must search within herself as she travels through the Midnight Library to decide what is truly fulfilling in life and what makes it worth living in the first place. So basically, if you couldn't gather from that synopsis, this is one of those books where it really is kind of like a, if you could undo something in your life and see how that would change the outcome, would you do it? Or if you could see how your life would change if you went right instead of left, would you look at that different version of your life? Now I will say, and maybe this is a slightly unpopular popular opinion or a hot take, but I am somebody that if I was given that option, I would not take that. I am a firm believer in that everything happens for a reason and you are right where you need to be. And honestly, like I really don't like living with regrets. Obviously, everybody's gonna have something that they slightly wish they could undo, but I don't wish I could undo any of that because it's gotten me to exactly where I am today. However, it's still really fun to play the imaginary what if game, especially within this novel. It is super interesting to see this character of Nora, who is typically, I guess what you would kind of say like a very normal character. There isn't anything like extraordinary about her. However, even just changing one teeny tiny thing in her timeline drastically altered her 
like new reality and that is something that I really enjoyed about this book although I wouldn't necessarily like take that like the opportunity that Nora had I really enjoyed getting to like view it from her perspective and it is fun to imagine like what if there's this like infinite number of like multiverses essentially that we're all like living in now I'm giving you a little warning here if you don't want a spoiler alert definitely like skip ahead a little bit or stay here if you finish the book or you don't care about spoilers by the end of the book Nora realizes that the life she had the original life that she had at the beginning of the story is the life that she wanted at the end of it all but at the beginning of the book her mindset was just skewed and so she thought that there was something so much better out there but she realized like what she needed was right in front of her all along so while yes it might be a little bit of a cheesier ending I do think that's very realistic and something that I do agree with and kind of going back to like what I was saying originally you know every choice that we've made every choice that I've made has led me to exactly where I am today and I love where I am today and so I wouldn't want to change anything in the end. I really enjoyed the writing style. I zipped through this book super super fast. Totally understand why it's like a new bestseller and why everybody's talking about it. But because I wasn't super connected with this idea of, you know, tons of different realities for us, I'm going to give this book a 4 out of 5. Just because, like I said, there was something about it that I couldn't, like, totally get into. But I definitely think this is a book that a ton of people could enjoy. Again, going through the reviews, it was very rare that I found somebody who couldn't appreciate at least one aspect of this book. The next book that I read was Writers and Lovers by Lily King. And this is one that I've just seen kind of pop up on my Amazon like recommended page. I've seen it on Goodreads and it's one that I feel like has a little bit of a smaller like cultish following but everybody who has read it has just loved it and so I really wanted to see why because I didn't know. Before getting into that though, let's read the synopsis. Blindsided by her mother's sudden death and wrecked by a recent love affair, Casey Peabody has arrived in Massachusetts in the summer of 1997 without a plan. Her mail consists of wedding invitations and final notices from debt collectors. A former child golf prodigy, she now waits tables in Harvard Square and rents a tiny moldy room at the side of a garage where she works on the novel she's been writing for six years. At 31, Casey is still clutching onto some something nearly all of her old friends have let go of, the determination to live a creative life. When she falls for two very different men at the same time, her world fractures even more. Casey's fight to fulfill her creative ambitions and balance the conflicting demands of art and life is challenged in ways that push her to the brink. Writers and Lovers follows Casey in the last days of a long youth, a time when every element of her life comes to a crisis. Writers and Lovers is a transfixing novel that explores the terrifying and exhilarating leap between the end of one phase of life and the beginning of another. I loved this book. The only reason I'm not going to give it a 5 out of 5 is because the beginning was just a little slow for me. I wish it had moved just a little bit faster for like the first 30-40 pages. So I'm going to give it like a 4.8, 4.9 out of 5. I think what was so beautiful about this story is it doesn't take place with crazy circumstances. Like, yes, it is kind of like a love triangle situation, but that's not the main part of the book. But the circumstances in which the book is based around, you know, isn't crazy. It isn't this like wild plot with all these twists and turns. It really focuses on kind of like living and viewing the the ordinary. The life of somebody who isn't the craziest, doesn't go on the craziest adventure, but just exploring this tiny little snippet of her life, it was just perfect. And I don't know if I'm making sense. This book touches on so much. It touches on grief and healing from that, love, a career, the struggle of is it time to give up on my dreams, I'm young but I'm not that young. And don't get me wrong, personally I don't think your 30s is old at all but I know that that is a very common thing that a lot of people go through at that age. I also really liked the fact that I felt like this book wasn't filled with unnecessary fluff and these long like really elaborate sentences. It was clear to the point and you knew the point of the main character but the book was obviously still very interesting. It wasn't like super cut and dry or anything like that. This is a book that I also think would make an incredible movie um, and one that I would really like to see one day. I could just like really picture these characters in my head and again I loved that the story still had me so Hooked, but the plot wasn't anything crazy dramatic or anything that wasn't believable like everything in this book to me was very very believable and very realistic and I just I really really enjoyed this I can't wait to read more from Lily King
King. Um, I haven't explored like any more of her books, but I will definitely be sure to do so um, in the coming months. And yeah, this was such a win for me again. Okay, finally, the last book that I read for the month of February was The Light We Lost, another book by Jill Santopolo. Let's get into the synopsis, shall we? Again, this is another fictional romance. Lucy is faced with a life-altering choice, but before she can make her decision, she must start her story, their story, at the very beginning. Lucy and Gabe meet as seniors at Columbia University on a day that changes both of their lives forever. Together, they decide they want to live their lives to mean something to matter. When they meet again a year later, it seems faded. Perhaps they'll find life's meaning in each other. But then Gabe becomes a photojournalist assigned to the Middle East, and Lucy pursues a career in New York. What follows is a 13-year journey of dreams, desires, jealousies, betrayals, and ultimately of love. Was it fate that brought them together? Is it choice that has kept them away? Their journey takes Lucy and Gabe continents apart, but never out of each other's hearts. I feel like some people are gonna disagree with me because this book was definitely, I hate using this word, but it was definitely a little bit cheesier than others. However, I really loved this book. Again, no shade to everything after, but I enjoyed this book so much more. This is definitely one of those romance books that can definitely make you a little misty-eyed in the end. I wouldn't say that any tears were shed for this one. I definitely cried very hard at other books before, but this one for sure was a little choked up at the end. This book really dives into the idea of, you know, after your greatest love is no longer your love and you're no longer together, does that mean that you're never going to be able to find a love, you know, the same or greater than that? Is there just one great love for you out there? Are there different kinds of great love. Something that I feel is very prominent and prevalent still today and something that a lot of people deal with. You know, it really made me think about like um, my boyfriend Kevin and I, like I really do feel like we were meant to be together. He is my best friend in the entire world. He is the love of my life. But if I would have never met him or things wouldn't have worked out, like how would my love life look different? To me, I don't know. I just don't think that part of my life would ever be as special or as fulfilling. And I feel like this book kind of really like touches on that. Now I will say I'm gonna knock off like you know, a point one of a point. I'm gonna give this 4.9 out of 5 because I wasn't thrilled with the ending. I kind of guessed that it was gonna end on some sort of like cliffhanger, which it did. It wasn't a cliffhanger that made me feel super mad, but I wasn't like 100% satisfied. I was satisfied enough that I finished the book and I was like, okay, that was not a waste of my time. Like I didn't get to the end of this book just to get like really angry at how it ended. I just wish it would have ended like slightly differently, especially considering this book is not a part of a series. So like that cliffhanger is never going to like get like addressed again. Again, we have a New York City based book so little bonus points in my book um, I also thought there were a lot of like really great quotes in this book I found myself highlighting a lot in my Kindle as I was reading this just a lot of great little sentences about love and about life and things that kind of like really made me think honestly which for a fictional kind of cheesier romance is rare going back to the idea of like turning a book into a movie like I talked about with writers and lovers this book could easily be turned into a movie I'm very surprised that somebody hasn't already done that but I really enjoyed this I feel like a lot of people would if you love a good Colleen Hoover book. I feel like you'd really enjoy this one. But with that, you guys, wraps up everything that I read for the month of February. I really hope that you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, be sure to give it a big thumbs up. And again, click that subscribe button if you haven't already. We're trying to reach 7K. That is the next goal here for this channel. I've already started my reading for March, obviously, and I'm very excited for the books that I've chosen to read this month. And as always, if you guys have any book recommendations for me, please leave them down below. Or on the other end, if you've read any of the books that I talked about, let me know your thoughts in the comments down below. I would love to get a conversation going. Be sure to follow me on all of my other social media networks, Instagram, Twitter, TikTok, Clubhouse. Check out my Amazon shop. Check out my Like to Know It. There's tons of links always in the description box. I love you guys so much. I hope that you all are staying safe, happy, and healthy, and I will talk to you guys again very soon in my next video. Okay? Bye, everybody.